Now, the reason why I'm doing this video on gang stalking, also known as organized harassment, abuse by proxy, or political repression, is because I'm a victim of this crime, and also because of the New York Times article which discredits targeted individuals, which are people who are victims of this crime, which is sponsored, sanctioned by the state and government, which is a crime that violates their human rights as well as their constitutional rights. Also, the phenomenon known as gang stalking or targeted individuals is now becoming more mainstream as more targeted individuals are exposing this crime against humanity. And I feel that the New York Times article was a way to discredit these targeted individuals. So by the time they reach mainstream or bring more awareness to this crime in public, they'll be discredited and look as crazy. I feel this is a way of the system or the government to discredit us through the media. That's why I had to pre prepare this video and make this. And that's why I prepared factual information on the phenomenon known as gang stalking because of the New York Times article, which is trying to discredit targeted individuals to try to make them look crazy. And also at the same time, I feel that targeted individuals are not presenting the information properly or using the proper terms to describe what's really going on to them. So at the same time, they make themselves look crazy. But that's why I presented only factual information and the real terminology that should be used to describe this phenomenon known as gang stalking or organized harassment. Because once we present the information properly, as well as the facts, we can actually expose this crime. Also, it's not just the New York Times that have been discredited and targeted individuals. Through other forms of media, as well as social media, there have been a campaign to discredit targeted individuals. But I have factual information, keyword factual information that proves everything is true from the gang stalking, the air stalking, as well as the electronic harassment and other components of this program, which is used to violate an individual's constitutional and human rights. Also, I will show you how this form of proactive policing, whether it's done on a local, state, federal, military, or a state-sponsored proxy level, contradicts itself. I will use examples from the recent Orlando shooting to show how this program contradicts itself and how it's not meant to prevent crime, but more to entrap and agitate to create crime. Also, I will get down to the facts to let you know what this program truly is, a form of covert policing using known unethical methods to neutralize, take down, and trap, and as well as cause devastating effects on a targeted individual's life using government mediums and resources integrated into this form of policing. Furthermore, I feel that targeted individuals are bringing more awareness to this topic known as gang stalking and organized harassment. I feel that these recent articles are meant to demoralize us and make us think we're not bringing any awareness. But the fact that they wrote this article means that we are. So I feel that we have to get on board on YouTube and start presenting more facts and trying to rationalize our story by presenting also factual information about the way they're attacking us and also our video evidence. So we are making a difference. So we have to actually go more harder in presenting our evidence and bringing more awareness to this topic. And how could I tell that we're making a difference? Because right now, as I'm making this video, I'm being gang stalked right now. So what does that tell you? Also, as targeted individuals, we have to come up with solutions on a targeted individual level, as well as link up with other targeted individuals, as well as get solutions from our government, whether it be on a state, local, or federal level. But I will explain that deeper in the video later. And definitions and terminologies. The definition of gang stalking, organized harassment, and covert harassment is a systematic form of harassment and control done by a group of people in an organized fashion to unethically use an unethical means 
to harass and control somebody to have devastating effects in that person's life. Now, those devastating effects, I'll explain deeper later on. Same terminologies that targeted individuals use, such as gang stalking, organized harassment, and covert harassment, those who are perpetrating this attack on us, they don't use these same terminologies to describe the targeted individual or this program of domestic terrorism. These are some of the terminologies that they use, such as human test subject, proactive policing, human experimentation, investigation, military assisting police, and I have the document to prove that. It's from 1984. I will show you that later. Another term they use is research, health codes, or health code violations. Another term they use is eugenics program, but that terminology, they don't use that anymore because a long time ago, each state in America had its own eugenics program. So they probably use health and mental hygiene as the proper modern term. Also, another term they use is threat assessment or threat assessment teams or psychological warfare. But since it's illegal to conduct psychological warfare on the public, they use psychological operations. And another term they use is behavioral modification or they use uh, psychotherapy. And another term they use is psychiatric referrals. And that's why a lot of targeted individuals, like when they use these terms like gang stalking, organized harassment, or covert harassment, these are not like legal terms. Like these terms that I explained that the perpetrators use, these are actually documented and legal terms. You can actually find them in legal documents, such as proactive policing. One of the definitions of proactive policing is to have a police presence to deter criminal activities. So that will explain why as soon as you walk out your house, all, all of a sudden, police and ambulance will just zip down and it happens more than once. Like almost every time when you come out your house, all of a sudden, there's like two police cars zipping, just flashing their lights as soon as they pass by your house. Because that's actually a form of uh, deterring criminal activity. So obviously somebody classified you as a criminal, even though you're not really a criminal. But that's that's why you have to use these like proper terms like investigation. Someone some agency can be conducting a investigation against you. But as soon as you use the term like gang stalking, organized harassment and covert harassment, these are like layman's terms like they don't hold no weight legally. And that's why when you use these proper legal terms, you can help people have a better understanding of what gang stalking is and also have a better way to explain yourself about what gang stalking is instead of saying I'm being gang stalked you could say I'm being harassed and have my rights violated through proactive policing or through an investigation or because of health codes or because of a threat assessment evaluation or through threat assessment teams because when people look up threat assessment teams uh, or human experimentation or they look up proactive policing or an investigation these documents will appear in state documents federal and legal state documents and proactive policing investigations threat assessments teams they do exist but when you just say gang stalking it just shows things from a TI perspective but it shows the government side of and that's why when you use these proper legal terms, you can help people have a better understanding of what gang stalking is. And you could also explain your case better and bring more awareness to it. Instead of saying I'm being gang stalked, you could say I'm being harassed and have my human rights as well as constitutional rights being violated under the guise of proactive policing or an investigation or through threat assessment teams. Because when you look up proactive policing investigation or threat assessment teams they appear in state documents 
keyword state documents and federal documents. So that would actually prove that the federal government or the state government or local government has some involvement in you being gang stalked. And that's the proper terminology for it. And that's the problem with a lot of targeted individuals like we're using these like layman terms and these terms don't hold no weight legally. So instead of using these uh, terms like gang stalking, we got to start using these proper terms because these terms appear in legal documents, federal, state and local legal documents. Also, when you look up proactive policing, you'll find that the tactics that are used in proactive policing are similar to the tactics that the perps use in gang stalking. That also applies for threat assessment teams. There are many people who are wondering why they've been gang stalked for so many years. If you look up threat assessment teams, you realize that they could decide for how long they want you to be on this watch list or this threat assessment list. Also, if you look up human experimentation, they could actually conduct experimentation on you if you consider a threat to yourself and also health code violations too. Like all these tactics that these proactive policing, investigation, and health codes and threat assessment teams use, they are similar to tactics of gang stalking. But when you keep saying gang stalking, gang stalking, all you get is the TI perspective. But when you say proactive policing, proactive policing, or threat assessment teams, that's more valid. Like you can actually look at the documents for these government uh, procedures. And they describe the same thing that the the perpetrators use when they gang stalk the targeted individual. So that's why. And then you match the documents together to prove that. Also, one more terminology, one more proper terminology that the perpetrators of this attack use are occupational health codes. Keyword occupational health codes. Look that up. Because when you look that up, you realize most of these programs are being done by the state. A few of them are actually being done by the federal government and some are rarely done by the military. And also some can be done by proxies, which are sponsored or sanctioned by the state, federal government or the military to do such. I'll explain later in this video. Now, the purpose of gang stalking, those who sanction and sponsor the attack or declare this attack on you, they want you to either become homeless, commit suicide, be institutionalized or in jail, or they're using you for behavioral modification study or to discredit you or to leave you destitute or to kill you in a way that cannot be traced to them. And they do this through provocation, trying to set you up, controlling and interrupting your life to guide you to do something outside of your nature. And they do this through provocation by constantly. Now, gang stalking attacks many aspects of a targeted individual's life, such as financial. One financial attack is to make you lose your job by having people who already work there coerced or persuaded to harass you or mob you or to cause little trouble with you at your workplace or they could insert people there for the sole purpose under the guise of an investigation or to keep an eye on you to mob harass you or psychologically abuse and harass you or to spread slander and defamation on you covertly and another way they financially attack you is to have you spend money repelling this attack such as moving or buying buying equipment such as like you know to protect yourself from the electronic harassment and other forms of uh attacks and other various financial attacks to stress you out financially gang stalking also attacks the social aspect of a targeted individual's life this is done by damaging the relationships of friends, family, and associates of the targeted individuals. This is done by spreading slander and defamation about the targeted individual to his friends, family, and associates. 
it can be done the other way around by spreading false information to the targeted individual about his friends family and associates to him this in turn will make the targeted individual not trust anybody this is a way to isolate the targeted individual and thus in turn if the attacks are severe the targeted individual will in turn not trust anybody and isolate himself or herself in turn you do the perpetrator's job for free and that's what they want you to do gang stalking also attacks the physical aspect of a targeted individual's life one way this is being done is through microwave or directed energy weapons these devices can cause pain and physical trauma to the targeted individual i'll explain this later on in a deeper manner in the video another way they cause pain and physical trauma to the targeted individual is through covert drugging this is done by covertly adding drugs or poison to the targeted individuals food drink or anything or anything that comes into physical contact with the targeted individuals body another way they cause physical trauma to the targeted individual is by cre creating an artificial stress in the targeted individuals life a targeted individual already has his natural stress to deal with but by constantly harassing him and agitating him they create an artificial stress that causes physical stress pain and trauma into the targeted individuals body so it's like you have your natural stress to deal with and then also you have this artificial stress that is being induced onto you against your will by these perpetrators by constantly harassing and attacking you and stress also has a physical effect on the body in the long term also gang stalking affects your psychological spiritual and morale aspect of your life this is done by constant harassment they constantly follow you everywhere you go you can go to the store you can go outside your house you can go to the park and they will constantly follow you and also the dirty mind games that they do these dirty mind games are to reduce one's morale and keep one in a constant spirit of fear also it attacks the targeted individuals peace of mind the targeted individual is constantly wondering why are they doing this to him or her or who's doing it when did it start and why they're doing it also when the gang stalkers attack you spiritually and morally they will constantly harass you this in turn if you do not understand the deeper meaning of this attack it will turn you into a cold-hearted person do not let their attack turn you into a cold-hearted person this is to neutralize your natural personality and you will become a cold-hearted person so understand that do not let their constant ruthlessness and meanness turn you into a cold-hearted person or shut down your natural personality i repeat that okay. now how do you get into this program there are many ways you get into this program one of the many ways is through a threat assessment so basically someone made a referral about you and now this threat assessment team whether it be state federal or city will conduct an investigation on you and they will come up with, with they will come up with a plan to how to assess and control you if they deem you as a threat and they could keep you on this list and keep conducting their control plan on you until they deem you no longer a threat so basically so basically they could keep you on this list as long as they want and you can look at this up now when it comes to this threat assessment team's plan they don't really explain specifically or get into details about what this plan is and basically this plan is the gang stalking program what the TIs or targeted individuals would refer to as gang stalking and the thing about it is when you look this up the threat assessment team or their plan to control their quote-unquote threat they could actually have certain aspects of this plan be given to certain agencies 
whether it be a state agency or a federal agency or a private agency. And that would explain like the community uh, watch programs being involved in it. Or it would explain why sometimes it looks like religious groups are involved in it or some other third party proxy groups are involved in it. So basically, they could actually give certain aspects of the plan or certain task of this plan to control you to other aspects or agencies. And that's why some people actually see military planes involved in it or some federal agency planes involved in it in the air stalking. So basically, they give that aspect, the aerial surveillance aspect to that agency and so forth. And also another thing with the the threat assessment plan is that you they never actually informed you or gave you any consent and that's why some people think it's human experimentation but in reality it's just a a way of controlling you through a threat assessment or their threat assessment plan so they can't it can't be deemed as a human experimentation but the same things that could be conducted in a human experimentation can be conducted but under the guise of a control plan from this threat assessment team and that's how they loop around the human experimentation and the thing about it is they're not going to send you a letter or saying that oh we're assessing you because why would they inform the quote unquote threat that they're doing this to you you see also another way to get into this program is through health codes or occupational health codes because by law if they deem you as a threat a quote unquote threat they have the legal right to actually warn any place that you go to or you're going to work into in advance that you're deemed a threat so basically and they could also do this on a community level like they could go in your community and any place you go and warn these people in advance that you're a threat even though you're not really a threat and also they have like people in the local community who are who are assigned to go to these places to inform these people or in other situations they could actually go into these locations to keep an eye on you under the guise that you're a threat because you're under the occupational health codes as being deemed as a threat or on a watch list another way you can get into this program is being a person of concern because they can also conduct an investigation on a person of concern or the police can report you or add you to a list to watch you or have a community group watch you this has many names gang stalking mob stalking community stalking you're in the middle of this ridiculous, irrational impossibility that is real and is happening. First, The Guardian revealed the National Security Agency is collecting telephone records of millions of Verizon customers. You can surveil someone through their phones, through their uh, certainly through their television sets. The last year and a half, he's been systematically followed by a group of people. Does the FBI use drones for surveillance on U.S. soil? Yes. New Associated Press investigation shows that the Bureau has its own little air force with scores of planes flying over American cities, recording video and tracking cell phone conversations. He has a man outside of his house in a hood like basically like a hood it looks and we can well this almost sounds like gang stalking or something have you heard of that many of the things that victims of gang stalking describe are also symptoms of mental disorders we're not having a group hallucination this is actually something that's happening So I came back to L.A. and basically lived in Los Angeles uh, as, a, uh, as a homeless man, just living on the street. I had my truck with a shell and I worked as a handyman or construction jobs that I would get. The gang stalking experience started for me when I noticed these black SUVs and other police vehicles driving slowly along the street, but they never 
uh, came up to me or said anything. And then I had seven or eight helicopters hovering directly over my apartment. And then it goes, lie. And it keeps happening, it keeps happening. And I, it begins to dawn on me that something is going on. And, and this continued on. Here comes the gang stalking helicopter. Here it comes. It's confusing to humans trying to understand gang stalking. Why would they do this to me? Why would they do these weird, petty little things that, you know, may even just irritate me at some moment? If you were to ask me what gang stalking is, it's a way to slowly kill people using their own decisions. Following the target closely. Boxing a target's vehicle in on the road done with three or more vehicles surrounding a target's vehicle while on the road in attempt to control their speed similar to or cloning FBI floating box system. Positioning long lines of traffic in front of the target's route. Driving at slow speeds in front of the target. Cutting off the target while on the road. Tailgating the target's vehicle. Shining high beams on the target's vehicle from side roads. Pulling forward while setting on side street sack as if they are going to pull their vehicle out in front of you. Making gestures at the target while on the road this can include individuals holding their arms out of their vehicle windows in an unnatural position or giving the target the finger, attempting to run the target off the road, driving by a target's house at fast speed, driving by a target's house fishtailing or burning tires, revving engine loudly by a target's home, organized stalking vehicle methods, vehicles driving in convoys, Members of these groups lined up in convoys along a target's route. Using many vehicles of the same color such as using several red vehicles around a target or driving many vehicles of the same color by a target's house. Members of these stalking and harassment groups intentionally passing the other members' vehicle by or around the target's home. This is a psychological tactic that is used to make the target sound mental or insane if the target complains of this type of harassment. Members' vehicles with certain logos or stickers used to identify the group Vehicles with drive-out task. Vehicles with no task. Vehicles with vanity plates very common within these groups. Vehicles with one headlight on and the other headlight off. Vehicles with turn signal on while driving by a target while on the road. Flashing turn signal on and off at the target while on the road. Vehicles with one headlight that is brighter than the other headlight. Sometimes rigged or controllable headlights that can be earned up into a spotlight to bribe the target on the road. Vehicles with extremely loud mufflers that is used to harass a target. Vehicles with intentional squeaky parts such as squeaky fan belts and squeaky brakes used as harassment and to sensitize the target to these noises. Devices that are given to members of these groups to put on their vehicles that make their vehicles sound to have very loud squeaky brakes used as harassment. Vehicles with high beam headlights on during the day this is done to identify with other members of the stalking and harassment groups. Members of these stalking and harassment groups reversing their vehicle in front of the target's home. Members of the stalking and harassment groups pulling in on streets or side streets setting or backing up repeatedly. Organized gang stalking on foot methods synchronized arrival and exiting by neighbors. Anchor. Intentionally leaving vehicle doors open around the target which is a form of an OP moral linguistic programming, street theater or harassment skits played out in front of the target. Directed conversation. Following the target. Glaring or pointing at the target. Intentional coughing at or around the target. Jangling keys around the target. Use of gestures such as lip licking. Arm gestures. You will see members of these stalking and harassment groups using certain gestures such as touching or bringing in their hand to their face or nose while around a target. These gestures are done to sensitize the target to these gestures. Most members of these groups have already been sensitized to these gestures themselves. Other gestures include members of these stalking and harassment groups holding their arms out of their vehicle windows while driving by a target or pulling up beside a target. This is also done while the target is on foot. Shining high beam headlights on the target, while target is walking. Using directed conversation while on cell phone, while around the target. Engaging the target in trivial conversation, 